Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I get to interview my friend, Ray Allen. She is the CEO of Pepper Shock Media. She also teaches marketing at at her university here. And I just think that you're going to enjoy this. She's um, very lively. She's much more fun than I am. And she has years and years under her belt in marketing. Um, She also, at the end of the podcast, gives you a way to access some of her free resources. So for those of you that are starting a business or you have a business and you're really interested in kind of upping upping your marketing game, I didn't say that very well, um, you definitely want to follow her. So enjoy today's show. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. My name is Heidi Bartolotta. I'm your host. In this podcast, you will hear real women, real stories, and real inspiration. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. First of all, thank you for doing this. It took us a while. I I feel like I say this a lot because most of the women that I interview have busy, crazy lives, but it took us a while to get this on the calendar. We did, and we are here. Finally here. Thank you. Thank you for having me and like all the hair and makeup and wonderful things that we got to do today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me on yours. So of course. Pod swap. That's that's what we do, right? Exactly. (laughs) So I would love it if you would start out by just telling our audience a little bit about how you ended up here. You're the CEO of a marketing company, and this is not where you started, obviously. So will you just talk a little bit about your journey to where you are today? Sure. Well, I was born in Moscow, Idaho. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so really it started, it all began in high school, and I was, um, we started the broadcast uh, class at Valley View High School, Go Falcons, and my... uh, it was my history teacher who um, said, Ray, you really need to sign up for this class. And so I did. And at first I was on camera, in front of the camera, thinking I was going to be like a newscast, newscaster. And then I realized behind the scenes is where I'm better, directing and telling people what to do. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so it really kind of took off from there. And I actually interned at Channel 6 when I was 15. Oh, my and gosh. I didn't know that a, part yeah, of your story. Yeah, yeah, it was the ABC affiliate at the time. And got through high school, and then television really put me through college. In my undergrad, I went to Boise State. I started working for Channel 12, and then was the first newscast director there, uh, Fox 12 News at 9. It's about time. And then from there, um, really started to do more in television, and then uh, also work got my undergrad uh, out of the way, and I actually met my husband, now husband, at Channel 12. (laughs) So we went, and uh, we got together, went to Seattle for a few years, and then and I, um, he got his degree in video production and design at the Art Institute of Seattle while I worked at Northwest Cable News and then Q13 and did all kinds of things within the TV station. So I was also in promotions and working with the Sonics and Sounders and Seahawks. And then at night, I would direct news. And in Seattle, it comes on at 11. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's why there are Starbucks on every corner because news comes on so late. So everyone has to, you know, drink their Starbucks. But uh, did that and Drew also also interned at a whole bunch of big city um, agencies and got a lot of big city experience. And I worked on my master's degree at the same time. And so I have a master's in marketing and uh, entrepreneurship. And then we decided to bring all of our big city experience back home to the Boise, Idaho area. And we're actually in Nampa now and have been there. And it'll be going on 19 years that we've been doing Pepper Shock Media together. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know this about your story, but you and I were probably in Seattle at the same time. Maybe so. It was 2001, 2002, kind of that whole time frame. Yeah. 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 When you said Sonics, I'm like, oh, yeah, I was a little out of the (laughs) Yeah, when they were still there. That (laughs) was the real Ray Allen, right? (laughs) (laughs) But at the time, my name was Pepper Sack, so not Ray Allen at the time, but... (laughs) Yeah. So... You kind of have, you're you're an anomaly in that I think most of the women that I've interviewed didn't know at such a young age that they 
were going to take a certain career path. Obviously, there's been a few like doctors that, you know, they knew very young, but you're very unusual in that. To know at 15 that you were interested in marketing is pretty rare, right? Yeah. And I think even further beyond that, it's always wanting to have my own business. My grandparents Mm -hmm. on both sides, my uh, grandparents on my dad's side, they ran a motel in Baker City, Oregon. So I have lots of experience in the hospitality industry. And then on the other side, they run a farm. And so I know what hard work is and I know what it takes to run a business. And I actually know how to balance tea sheets, right? And in like how mm-hmm. to do books the old fashioned way. Yeah. And so not that I want to do bookkeeping because that was never my love, but I could do it and I did it. <laughs> and so, yeah. And even it's a then, special person. Yep, it is. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Spreadsheets are not my love, but I had those capabilities, you know, kind of passed on to me from my grandparents. And so I knew that I always wanted to have my own business. And I knew that, you know, media and video production and design, all of those things interest me in marketing Mm -hmm. was really kind of what I fell in love with. And so when my husband and I got together, we literally made a hybrid agency. He was video production, design and those things. And I was the marketing and PR communication side of it. And then we grew from there. Now we've got 10 people. You know what I think would be interesting for us to talk about for our listeners is um, normally I ask a lot of questions about motherhood, right? Managing a a business, a career, and motherhood. But you also run a business with your husband. I do. Right? (laughs) Yes. That brings in a very different dynamic that there's probably some women out there that would be like, oh my gosh, tell me how you do it. Like, how, (laughs) how, how does that work, yeah. right? The good and the bad. Yep. Yep. If you're willing to share. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, you know, has its trials and tribulations along the way, but I think the best thing is that we are yin and yang to each other. I am, it you know, it just works for you. It totally works. And, and I do think we balance each other out in just different areas. I'm, you know, the visionary and I see the big picture and, you know, I'm go, go, go. And he's a little more analytical and, mm-hmm. you know, more supportive that way. And, and so we really do kind of have that balance, which is good. So you really have your roles. You've really, mm-hmm. yeah. Is there any, is there any like, bit of wisdom that you would say, because I'm sure there were some struggles in finding those (laughs) roles, right? Like, is there Uh something that you would say, oh, when we figured out this or that it was really helpful? I think the key to our success is the schedule, the calendar, (laughs) honestly. I mean, we live and die by that. And um, my, you know, husband helps pick up the kids and he helps do things. And we have a 16 and 14 year old, two boys, and they've also grown up in the business too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being been a part of it, but it does, it does help to plan ahead as much as we can and plan out who's going to do what and who's going to be responsible for what and when. And, and, you know, we just work together as a team. And if I'm out at an event and, you know, one of the kids needs to go somewhere or be somewhere, then and he's really good about that. And I also have family in town. You know, we live two miles away from my mother-in-law, which is a really good thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not, but for us, it mm-hmm. is really good. And my dad just moved, um, he retired and moved back from Alaska. So he's around. And so we support, have that support f- from other people that help us do this business together and make the things happen that need to be, you know, done. And, and I think that's one thing that it takes a lot of work to plan and mm-hmm. also have time to not always do business, right? And, and right. go I places and do ask, things. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that I would imagine for couples that work together. Mm-hmm. It's the separation. Like, how do you keep that separated? So it's nice that mm-hmm. you said that, I think. And the calendar yeah. probably really helps because yeah. it's like, oh, these are work commitments mm-hmm. and these mm-hmm. are personal commitments. Mm-hmm. But the support team you brought up with your family, mm-hmm. um, I think is also a big one. Yeah. I watch I watch women try to run businesses where they don't engage Stuff. a support team. And I just mm-hmm. don't, I mean, I just don't think you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is our boys are involved in scouts, and Drew's a, a assistant scout master, and he also has other scouts that are part of it. So there's other moms that are scouters, too, that are scout moms. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a shared responsibility. And, mm-hmm. and you know, my friend Amanda, her boys have grown up in scouts with my boys. And you know what? There's been weekends where my kids went over to her house for the whole weekend, and her kids came to my house for the whole weekend. And mm-hmm. it's been a, a really good thing to have other people that you can rely on and lean on to, yeah. you know, send your kid out when you need to go someplace or do something. But yeah. 
Yeah. It, yeah, that's definitely having the support and being able to call on people to help when you need it and vice versa and, you know, reciprocate that help when they need it too. Yeah. So let's dive a little bit more into the business piece. So yeah. um, I love, obviously, y- you've gotten to know me pretty well. I love for women to hear the struggles. Sure. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, you you obviously have a really strong entrepreneurial background, but I know there were struggles along the way. Give us yeah. one or two and kind of something that would help someone that might be going through it now or something where it's there for them. So when they do go through it, they're like, I remember that woman on that podcast. Yes. Okay. So I don't always talk about this part of my life much, but I uh, moved out when I was 17 and was told that I wouldn't amount to much because I, my last year, I kind of, you know, did, didn't, focus on school as much as I should have. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, I was honor society, all the, you know, all the good things. And my last year was pretty hard and I just took it and just didn't care like I should have. Mm-hmm. And so I moved out with a whole bunch of roommates, partied way too much, did stupid things that I should never have done, right? But realized, you know what? I have to get through this. I have to go to school. I have to, you know, make things happen for me. On, on my mom's side, I'm first generation college student who graduated mm. from college. And I didn't want to be the sixth generation of females in my life to have a baby at 17 or 18 years old. I was the first one not to have a child at that young of an age. Mm-hmm. And it's no no disrespect to my grandparents and right. great grandmas and, and my, you know, mm-hmm. all those things. But I, at some point, had to wake up and, you know, I, now I'm on my own. Now I'm doing my own things and I have to get it together because I am my own boss. I am my own person. I'm, right. If anybody's going to make it happen, it's going to be me. So I think that during that time, I went through a lot of just being rebellious and getting it out of my system. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I would have stayed on that track, I wouldn't be here today. I would not be sitting here doing this with you. I would have, you know, probably, I don't know who knows what would have happened, right. but it, it was, it was not a good path for a while. And so those who are listening, who, you know, may think that, uh, if you, if your family has never gone to college before you can do it because mm-hmm. I did, and it's, it's not easy to get yourself through it and, you know, be told that you're going to amount to nothing unless you get your act together yeah. and, and truly that is a big part of my kind of turnaround in my life of getting myself put together and, and making it happen. And probably a really big driver in your success because I think it's so interesting. I was actually just talking with a really dear friend of mine about this, that um, those of us that grew up with not much, um, we tend to have this work ethic oh, yeah. because we didn't have. And you know, I think sometimes when you're in it, you look at it like, oh, I wish I had whatever, Mm -hmm. that life, that person's life. But you look back and you think, oh, it's really, it was really a blessing in disguise. And um, so it's interesting for me to hear you say that because I didn't know that part about your story. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite questions to ask uh, new uh, potential employees, what was the, the first thing that you saved your money for that you spent your own money on? And for me, it, I bought my own car. Yeah. It was very important to me to be able to do that. And I wanted my own money, my own car, my own, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and it's interesting to understand how the trajectory of people, how their mindset is, their work ethic mm-hmm. and the things. And not to say that people who work hard, if somebody, you know, mommy, daddy buy them their car, it's not always that way. Right. But if, you know, having kind of a silver spoon versus having the ability to make your own spoon mm-hmm. is quite different in how you treat your work ethic and how you know and can appreciate the things that you're accomplishing because of what you're doing. Yeah. And it's not just gifted to you. Yeah. 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 So let's jump into Pepper Shock. So you have, and I didn't say this, but you also teach at the university. So mm-hmm. you teach marketing. So you own a marketing company and you teach marketing. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Pepper Shock. And I know that I'm going to ask you to share with our audience as we get to the end, just how they can learn from you because yeah. there's so much, you put a lot of rich resources out there. So I'm excited for them to learn that, but talk about the company and you know, you've, you've had it for so many years now mm-hmm. as a female business owner and granted you have your husband with mm-hmm. you, but as a female business owner, we talk about, I don't know, a hurdle mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. someone could learn from because yeah, sure. you have owned your business for 
a long time, right? We've weathered some storms for sure. (laughs) I mean, the economy definitely has had to have impacted you because you're in marketing. So you work for companies. Mm -hmm. So when companies struggle, obviously. It rolls downhill. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So will you talk a little bit about maybe weathering one or two of those? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I can remember the very first, um, you know, downturn in the economy, the the um, recession that was going on, 2007, 2008. And, I mean, clients were dropping like flies. Right. Just kind of like the right. pandemic during, you know, while people were trying to figure out what was going to happen and navigate the pandemic and whether or not they were going to have marketing budgets or, you know, money to even employ the people that they had working for them. Right. And, you know, it, it's interesting because what got us through that first... Um, recession truly was a government contract. Interesting. And and because of that, we were able to sustain our people. Um, and the second time, you know, with the pandemic, government money <laughs> kind of got through it, right? And it's tough to, to, to take weather. it, but we had to do it, you know? When you, so in the first one, the government contract, was it something that you had prior to the recession or was it something that came during? It came during, So just yeah. a blessing yeah, during that totally time. Yeah, it was. It really was. And obviously you'd yeah. built the reputation to deserve it, but... That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We um, basically were contacted by a prime contractor and we were a sub to a prime to a federal contract. And um, it was uh, guaranteed money, which Mm -hmm. was, you know, normally we probably wouldn't necessarily go after it because it's not the type of work that we would otherwise do because it's pretty remedial. And it was training videos and, you know, things that otherwise wouldn't be the love of what we would want to do. Right. But I sure loved being able to keep my people employed. Yeah. And so, you know, you you benefit the benefits and drawbacks of the jobs that you take on and, and sometimes you do those to to sustain. And right. you know, kind of like during the pandemic, it's we we had several clients that couldn't utilize our services and they're mm-hmm. slowly starting to come back now. But it, it did the hospitality industry, the restaurant industry. I mean, we lost okay. clients that yeah. way. And, you know, we ended up doing some things that again, we don't normally do. Like we um, we broadcast a graveside, a funeral. It's it's the craziest thing that we did during the pandemic, uh-huh. but we knew how to use Zoom. We'd been using Zoom for a long time, and we had a relationship with a wireless uh, provider, and a, and we had the production truck, and we could run the generator away so that people couldn't hear it. And coincidentally, um, all the grave sites are six feet apart, so people could distance themselves, and we did it. We you know, but it was a very prominent um, you know former senator who had passed away, and if we hadn't done it, you know, six hundred people who were on the Zoom call wanting mm-hmm. wanted to be there and participate. Mm -hmm. could could otherwise you know and if they weren't there in person um then they could still participate in the the service yeah but the thing that i love about asking these kinds of questions is you just do what you need to do so like (laughs) you're looking at what do we have the capability for okay we have a strength in this that Probably most people were not using Zoom at the. I know mm-hmm. every the world uses now Zoom it now, does, right? but yeah, yeah. but the they weren't at the on. time. Yep, and you mm-hmm. had a proficiency in it, yep. and so you chose mm-hmm. to use it in a different way, which I love. Yeah. So we also did graduations. High school oh. students who couldn't graduate, right? Right. Uh, you know, get their traditional yeah. uh, graduations. So we did. We did uh, several graduations on Zoom. And That's... again, it was nothing that we normally do, but we had the capacity and the capability. Right. And we just, you know, made it happen. And what a and, blessing yeah. for those people that you yeah. were able to do oh, yeah. it, too. Yeah. yeah. Never have we ever had to do that before, you know, the pandemic. Right. And, and now I think it's going to happen Probably a lot all the more. time, yeah. right? Because yeah. now people who can't come in person, like for oh, weddings concerned. and all those things. But I mean, yeah. we don't normally do those things, but it was certainly something that could get done. And it also helped us sustain our Employees. business. The other thing that was really cool that we got to do is the Boise Philharmonic. Now, normally, I remember that recording any performance right. is absolutely, you cannot do it. Right. So we had to get special permission yeah. from all of their, you know, the, the, Mm-hmm. Yeah, the unions that they work for mm-hmm. to be able to record. And it was the weirdest thing. Morrison Center is completely empty of people. So it's like they were performing this concert for just you. for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I was behind the camera. And, and so we're just a select few of our crew in, in this amazing music, this whole production yeah. for whole season so that they could have, you know, right. the Philharmonic on demand. And people watched 
people who never went to the Boise Philharmonic in person watched started it. watching it online. Right. So yeah. now we've just opened it was a whole new audience. To yeah. Them. yeah, exactly, exactly. So now there's a whole new audience that are now going to, you know, be exposed to this because of it. I know. Yeah. I do think, you know, living through the pandemic, obviously it's going to be history books, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's so many, if you look for them, there are blessings that Absolutely. have come out of it. So, yeah. okay, I yeah. want to tailor into a couple of questions and then yeah. wrap up. So um, the question that I always ask my guests is, do you remember when you hit six figures and what oh, that felt like? Gosh, I'm gonna say two thousand. Not year, just oh. how it felt. Like, do you re- oh, I, obviously oh, you, okay, yeah. you remember yeah. it generally? Yeah, yeah, okay. But what did that, mean, if anything, yeah, sure, it, did sure. it mean something to you? Gosh, um, yeah, because when we first started the business, I the only loan that we got was from my father-in-law and, and my mother-in-law at the time, and um, and and you know, it was to buy our first camera. <laughs> and so when, when we got to pay that back and then the following year when we started, you know, actually, you know, getting our business up and running, right? I mean, that was such a good feeling. You know, right. you make these business plans and you, you do all these things that you're supposed to do, but gosh, does it ever follow what you do on paper? Oh, no, no way. Right. And and so, yeah, I mean, I think that it was, it was, you know, <laughs> I love it that. was delightful. I mean, as the business, right? I mean, now what we pay ourselves in salaries, you know, at the time we were just a sole proprietor. So everything that the business made, it was ours anyway, you know? Um, But yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was very fruitful when I got to quit my main job that I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And then Drew got to quit his job. He was working at Channel 6 and making, you know, commercials for Mm -hmm. Channel 6 for um, production. He had gone back to Channel 6 and worked for them um, after we came back from Seattle. And and when we both got to quit and then we got to do this full time and like take Mm -hmm. it not just as our side hustle, you know? I mean, there was a point where it was like, okay, am I working more on Pepper Shock after hours than I am in my main job? Or, you know, what's what what gives? And yeah, I mean, so yeah, not too long after we got started is really, when we started kicking in and and making some money and it was you know we started working for albertson's and tamarack and yeah. um the arts commission and we were doing all kinds of cool fun things and it started to build up from there that's yeah. really cool yeah so okay book or podcast <laughs> um what do i listen to most because i listen to both <laughs> yeah one that you would recommend or two oh, if sure you have. sure um well i just recently got to interview um the podcast host of marketing over coffee okay and so we did a swap cast too so i actually like listening to his too it's a lot of uh you know marketing tools and techniques that that are um you know relevant to what we're we're doing too mm-hmm. um and of course the, the mom's making fix six figures <laughs> podcast <laughs> oh, you don't have to say that. No, I oh, love for good. people to hear yeah. things that yeah. they can add. Yeah, sure. Because everybody um, has different... Amy Porterfield is one mm-hmm. I love to listen to. I mean, she's definitely got it dialed in for online, you know, webinars and marketing and building your brand and, and things online. And mm-hmm. she's doing all kinds of classes and, you know, how to make money at, at teaching online, right? Yeah. And uh, so I've definitely listened to a lot of her tips and techniques and things like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anything that I didn't ask that you think? Oh, you're asking that question that I asked you. <laughs> I always ask it. But okay. when you threw it at me, I was like, oh my gosh, I should have known this was coming. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so what did you not ask me that you should have? No, I'm kidding. Yes. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know. What would I, what would you ask? What's what, ask me what my favorite color is. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Orange. You know why? <laughs> Why? Because Pepper Shock. I was going to say your your brand is (laughs) orange. (laughs) Okay. So um, how can our listeners find you. Absolutely. And, yeah. 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 Um, there's a couple different ways and you mentioned, you know, just all the resources that we do. So I do teach, um, a lot of different things. So we have the free Facebook, uh, group, the marketing expedition members group. And then every second Thursday, we do a new topic, a live webinar every second Thursday, uh, the marketing expedition webinar. So we can go on marketing journeys together. And then clubhouse is every Wednesday at 10 AM mountain standard time. And I'm always, I love clubhouse. It's so much fun. I get to meet yeah. people from all over. Um, and then we do different um, 
different types of events throughout the year. Culture and Brand Camp is one event that I love to do. Uh, new marketing trends for the new year and um, just different things. Oktoberfest is always a fun thing. and It's our uh, anniversary, our workversary as we call it. So that's always a big party. Everybody dresses up for adults so and fun. it's kind of like the adult uh, Halloween costume party for, for October. Anyway, so lots of fun things that we get involved in, but I would say go to peppershock.com slash mm-hmm. events and you can see what's coming up. Uh, and then you can register for the webinars and all that. Oh, and the podcasts, of course. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> and to have a podcast. Yes, yes. And um, so we just were ranked within the top 10% most popular podcast in the globe. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Congratulations. Yeah. I, I, I'm so happy and so proud because my team does a lot to help make make mm-hmm. it happen. And so anyway, uh, so the Marketing Expedition podcast, and it's released every Thursday. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. And thank you again Absolutely. for doing this with me. Thank you. This yeah. is so much fun. fun. I yeah. love it. <laughs>